I take this opportunity to thank all of you for coming and to welcome you to Delhi and to India. We very much look forward to receiving your advice and based on that to form the child rights declaration for this second high level committee meeting. Our executive director of UNICEF, Mr. Anthony Lake, he was very adamant that we should avoid that there are two realities in Asia and the Pacific. One reality for the ones, the happy few, and another one where really basic services are not met. So what we want, of course, to achieve with this conference, that we are very clear on the next steps. So what is it that we can do to have one reality? And that one reality is about children surviving, thriving, and living up to their potential. 33 governments will be talking about their programs and their strengths, their weaknesses, and their desire to learn from each other. So that something that has worked very well in one country can actually serve as an example or an inspiration, hopefully, for another country. So that through this conference we accelerate progress for children and that is not just words we would like to see that in action our host country uh, deserves our thanks not only for bringing us together but for its commitment to its own and the world's children a commitment is demonstrated by hosting this meeting by the progress of india's children and by india's leadership in the promise renewed movement to dramatically reduce under five mortality uh, and maternal deaths. And we also need to recognize India's striking economic leadership in recent decades in this region and beyond. But as we rightly celebrate economic gains and the progress being enjoyed by millions of people across Asia and the Pacific, I know that everyone here in this room and every government that you represent is not losing sight of the gaps in the progress that still exist the second reality that you are working on is one characterized by about three million children under five who die every year across the region, largely from causes that we know how to prevent. A lack of vaccinations and other health care, vitamins or adequate nutrition, clean water, proper sanitation. The futures of the children who do survive their fifth birthdays can be severely limited by the lack of access to education. Far too often, children with disabilities, those in indigenous populations, and especially girls in many countries are excluded from school, counted out before they have a chance to count. I think my first impressions here in, in Delhi are really that we have over 30 countries that are incredibly committed to child rights. And, and not just to the principles of child rights, which is essential, but to action. And so we've, we've already heard in the speeches about the actions that are taking place, that have taken place since 2010, when we had the first meeting for child rights and, and South-South Corporation. That's exciting. It is not only uh, preparing the future, uh, future for the children, but preparing the children for the future. I think this makes sense. And I, I truly believe that this is how it should be. UNICEF is working uh, better in Bangladesh for the uh, child, child level, especially for the Islam areas, and as well as they are giving the stipend to the uh, working uh, um, uh, child, so those who are in the risky jobs. So they, uh, they, uh, that is a good initiative. They are giving a stipend to them. When you get to know people at a one-to-one -one basis, I understand there is a, an opportunity for a dialogue from then onwards. So to take further some of the ideas that I'm beginning to see through the country presentations, which I'm very keenly listening into, I hope I'll be able to have some best practices that I could then take for the context of the Maldives and continue this conversation through either perhaps UNICEF, etc., as a, a medium and continue to have conversations with countries that we may be able to learn from. If the children are healthy, educated, they will be the future and they will be the property of the nations and they can handle the nation in the right way. That's why it is very necessary to have the third high level 
meeting. I think that this is a this is the proper time and the proper time we, and we need to focus this area that uh, we need to focus on early childhood development, particularly child to uh, child abuse and something like that. And I really appreciate 30 members from delegates from 30 countries are around 150 delegates are here to to attend this meeting. And this is something I would like to know. We are now in the process of. Uh preparation of the national action plan to prevent and eliminate violence against children. And of course there is a lot to learn from the experience of countries and following this meeting we will continue on early childhood development as well. Listen to each country about the experiences, the challenge they face and the commitment. Uh, I believe we are all here together because we are committed to the child's rights. So that's uh, all of us here presented. So that's true. I truly believe that. And also, um, as I today I present, our government is seriously, I mean, committed to the child's right and is offering to host the next third high-level meeting in Timor Leste. That's coming from our prime minister, prime minister Mr. Kairala Shannon Guzman. I think you should continue till, this, uh, the, till the problems of children are resolved and it's a big world and the population growth through is very high. We have to control the population, we have to control and see that things are under control and we have to in build up the institutions, we have to build up systems where we are under control and we feel that things are going towards a progressive uh, road. I feel it's still going to be, take us quite a long time till we will say okay, we don't need any more uh, engagements and interactions with other countries. I feel the need is still very much there because we have not reached our goals as yet. The adoption of the Delhi Declaration has restated our commitment to the realization of all rights of all children within our respective countries. Through the Declaration, we have reaffirmed that child rights are fundamental to all cultures and societies and are crucial to children's growth and upbringing. We all have restated our commitment to the realization of rights of children within our respective national jurisdictions. We are convinced that despite the great diversity represented by the 33 countries in Asia and Pacific participating in the high level meeting, the people of the region share much in common, have strong mutual interests, and have much to gain from closer cooperation to share good practices and lessons learned in support of the realization of child rights.